Ollie Peart reporting on COP26 there, where we can talk a little about this with uh, Simon West from Lyme Regis, who is the managing director of the Word Forest organisation, who's with us now. Simon, good morning. Good morning, Steve. Nice to have you there. Um, Broadly speaking, your focus is on uh, ecological work around the world. How optimistic are you feeling about what might be achieved in COP26? Oh, I always have to remain completely optimistic. There's no point uh, going up there. We are official observers as a charity, which uh, we're very proud of. Only 454 official observer organisations. We're one of them. Um, And I'm very optimistic that... COP will achieve what it has to achieve in order to avoid catastrophic climate change. And and what do you consider the things that it has to achieve? Um, You know, so many different agendas pulling this in different directions. If if one or two things came out of it, what would you like those to be? Well, it's it's very simple in my my view. Um, It's like any project management thing. They they've set some targets. They set them back in Paris. We need to measure where they've got to and they need to plan to make sure that they actually achieve those targets. Um, That's the bit where my optimism begins to fail, where I think at the moment we are not on target to achieve anything like the reductions that we were supposed to. However, um, we have to continue to pressure our governments, all of the governments around the world, to make those changes. Uh, some high-profile absentees at the conference, as I say, which starts on Sunday. Uh, and, you know, China, I guess, biggest amongst those, a, a country with a, a huge environmental impact as it uh, becomes the global superpower. How significant is it when you have, you know, people like Xi Jinping, President uh, Xi, not, not attending this conference? Yeah. I think it's very significant, but just because they're not coming to the party doesn't mean the rest of us can't do everything in our power to um, avoid the massive changes that are coming. Yeah, I mean, this is this is it, I guess, is that we as a country can work alone. We've seen that from our governments over the years. Countries can work together, uh, you know, some or many. It's just a case of if, if more work together, then more can potentially be achieved. Um, you say you're an official observer, one of 454 charities fulfilling that role. To, to what extent will you be checking these world leaders' homework? What, what do you do in that capacity? Right. Um, I mean, yeah, it would be lovely if we could have an input as well, but that's not allowed. <laughs> um, what we will be doing is taking what we see at COP and producing jargon-free stories of what the news is covering and what it isn't as well. Um, we've also got events that we're putting on in the green zone and the fringe, Um, We have a film which we've talked about on your show before called Trees of the Key um, that's free to view and we'll be putting that on. Um, We're also collecting signatures for two environmental petitions, one um, in support of a murdered environmentalist who was a friend of the Word Forest organisation. She was murdered in Kenya for protecting forests and one asking for a weekly science-led climate address in the way that the government managed to produce daily science-led COVID addresses. So we're asking them to say, come on, treat the climate um, catastrophe in the same way as uh, they treated the uh, the pandemic. We also have a very fun thing, Steve, I just want to mention, um, we are part of a group called Hot Poets. Um, we've had a poet called Zena Edwards, who's a renowned um, poet on climate change, who has written and produced a poem for us there are 12 other 12 organizations, including us, including the Met Office, RSPB and Somerset Wildlife, who've all had different poets going in and they will be launched over the 12 days of COP. Ours is the first on Monday. Cool. So watch out for hot poets and you'll find something a little bit different. Very good. We'll check the content of that and maybe we can get it read for our show on uh, on Monday morning. Um just a final thing, Simon, I, you know, I, I hear your optimism and I um, I applaud that. But you'll be aware that so much of what has to be achieved will sit uncomfortably with individuals. You know, Joanna Lumley Mm. earlier this week in the Radio Times was talking about the notion of, you know, maybe some kind of rationing system um, uh, for for the things that we do that have a an environmental footprint. And we I mean, here in Britain, 
in particular in the Western world generally, we've become accustomed to our world of consumption and so much of what needs to change will fly in the face of that. You know, difficult conversations about international travel, holidays, fast fashion, new cars, all this kind yeah. of stuff. Um, this this is going to be a big political battle, isn't it? You know, even if there is an agreement at COP26, whatever is brought back to Parliament and then to constituencies is potentially going to be quite difficult to swallow. Um, potentially it is, but I think it's a learning exercise for all of us. You know, there are tiny changes that we can make that make a, a massive difference. Just look at the old incandescent light bulbs and how we've all pivoted. Now we absolutely love our LED light bulbs because we're, they're smart and we can control them. It's the same thing with lots of different little facets of our life, like having meat-free Mondays or reducing the amount of, of the most damaging food that we eat, um, not buying that very, very cheap T-shirt, wearing it once and throwing it away. It's those kind of lifestyle changes that we can all do really easily to reduce our consumption just a little bit. It's not going to be government led. It is going to be led by the individuals making those choices every single day. After all, it's the seven or eight billion of us that have got us into this place. We can get us out. From Lyme Regis this morning, Simon West, the managing director of Word Forest organisation. You can find out more about the work they do at wordforest.org. And we'll check in with them over the course of the COP26 Climate Change Conference. We'll talk more about that before half past seven.